Thank you very much. And on to our next piece um, with some very practical information and exciting um, news. Uh, Wanda, would you like to take it away? <laughs> thank you very much, Roberta. And thank you, Sandra, for that. Um, yeah, we, we try to do things at a very basic, basic uh, level to help out our partners to see, you know, what is it that we can do with, within the structure of 60 million girls. And uh, we had set up a research and development team, as you probably all know, uh, probably 12 years ago now, um, because we just felt it was important to try to see what else was going on around the world and try to pick up best practices or content or whatever it might be. Of course, a lot of effort has been put on uh, specifically looking for content, uh, academic content for the Rachels, for the mobile learning labs. And then in the last two years, uh, we have 12 members in our research and development team now, and their job has really been to see what content we can put on the Rachel, so digital content uh, related to climate change. Uh, and it's been really, really difficult to find anything that's particularly um, geared to the context that these children live in. Um, you know, we talked about it a lot, talking about electric cars doesn't do a whole lot, you know, in Zambia or Zimbabwe or Sierra Leone or uh, Nicaragua. Uh, so there's very specific topics that these children need to have uh, information wide. So it's it's been a, an uphill battle for sure to to find things, but we have developed a uh, Excel spreadsheet and I'll just, so I'm able to share my screen, I think. Okay, and I will try to find that. Um, let's see. So this is the, can everyone see that? Okay, so this is the uh, Google spreadsheet that we've developed. Um, it's an ongoing uh, project mm -hmm. and we have a lot of content, just general academic content for students in math, literacy and so on. But we decided to do something specific for climate education. So on the first tab, it says <clears throat> educational materials. Uh, we've gone through and uh, found all kinds of different links to content that we felt at first view is appropriate and would be helpful. Uh, we indicate the organization, the website, the purpose of it, um, you know, give a little bit of detail too. So try to do a first vetting, um, but this might be information that could be helpful to our partners. Uh, something to include on the Rachel units um, if they so desire. So you have that on the second tab, we have research articles. Uh, there again, we've looked at a lot of things, again, to educate ourselves on that intersection between girls' education and uh, climate change. A lot of very interesting things. Uh, a few articles from Christina, of course, <laughs> are in there. Um, but we really tried to scan and to see what would be helpful to us as we uh, look to be better funders and to help support our um, our partners. Um, the third uh, section is a little bit shorter, but uh, we have found a number of different areas where funding could be available to our partners. Um, so there's a list there and then there's links to the particular uh, websites. Uh, some interesting uh, potential, again, you know, you'd have to go through it and, and see. Uh, there's International Telecommun Telecommunications Union, uh, which uh, someone brought to our attention, and they have been funding some uh, projects uh, linking um, for education and uh, linking climate change. Global Affairs Canada, which you're all very familiar with, uh, does... Um, uh, does have uh, different funding for uh, climate action and it's certainly something that they're bringing up more and more in the projects that they uh, would like to fund. Motorola Solutions, we recently sent out a link uh, to everyone on our partner list because they do have some funding there again um, for technological uh, content for students. Uh, UN Women, there's the UN Trust Fund to end violence against women. At first glance, you wouldn't think that necessarily applies, but we went through it and there are a number of different uh, initiatives that did receive funding and they all seem to talk about the impact of climate change. So there again, it might be um, a possible venue uh, for funding there. Uh, IDRC, of course, 
And then there's grand challenges, Canada, and there's grand challenges in a number of different uh, countries as well. And so there's quite a bit going on there in terms of funding for, uh, for climate change, for impact of uh, climate change. Um, the other thing we wanted to talk about is something that uh, we're having lots of fun with, and I'm going to just try to change my screen and see if we can get down to here. Does everybody see this? About uh, yeah, that's yeah, good. Okay, that's fine. Oh, sorry, I'll go back down. Um, we are working on something with uh, McGill students. Uh, we've been working with them since last August. They had offered to give us their support on anything that we felt was important uh, for 60 million girls. And we talked again about this challenge of finding a quality content to put on the Rachel server for the mobile learning labs. So after much discussion, we came up with the idea finally of doing a type of hackathon event uh, and it's called Create for Good. It's going to be happening from March 22nd to March 24th uh, here in Montreal on the McGill campus. And it's really, um, uh, it's a challenge. It's, it's not so much a hackathon as a creative challenge, I guess we can call it. It's a launch pad for innovative game prototypes. The objective is to develop a self-directed climate education uh, game to developing communities. Um, and we want that game, of course, to be open source, uh, to be very contextually relevant to the students in the projects that we've supported in the past. Um, it'll re it can reach up to 700,000 students uh, if we just go only through the, McGill, the uh, 60 Million Girls Mobile Learning Labs and the Rachel devices that are uh, available around the world. It's something that we would like to eventually have uh, open source on a platform such as uh, Google Play uh, that anyone can use for free. Um, so it's Jed Consulting is the McGill Club that's supporting us. And uh, it really aims to address that gap that we've been talking about where the content is just not available that's contextually relevant to the students in, uh, in that particular area. So uh, I know many of you on this call are already involved. Uh, if any of you are further interested or know of anyone, certainly in the gaming sector, the environment sector, uh, who would be interesting in helping us out, we're trying to make a multidisciplinary teams. So there's teams of four, we expect to have uh, 12 teams and really trying to get people or students from the education, international development area, of course, hackers and coders, uh, we expect by the end of the weekend, we'll have these absolutely amazing, uh, innovative ideas and concepts on the game. And then after that, we have a group of uh, different professionals who are going to be supporting us and actually uh, developing the game to a useful uh, product at the end. And a lot of our international development partners have already agreed to do some beta testing uh, of it in the field to make sure that it's adequate. Uh, we do want something that obviously has a feminist lens to it and uh, is also very inclusive and uh, that can be quite easily modified uh, depending on language, but something that really represents the, the students themselves. 